Katie O'Reilly and welcome to KDO's Food Carnival. I am so excited. Something came for you in the mail. It's an invitation. Let me read it to you. Katie O'Reilly of KDO's Food Carnival requests the honor of your company for an afternoon tea to celebrate well, life and good food, of course. When? Now! Let's go! I am so happy you could make it to my tea party. I am thrilled to be sharing this time with you. Afternoon tea is such a sophisticated experience, truly. It originated in 1840 in the high society in England, of course, as we all recognize it as the English afternoon tea. And it was a time for snacking and socializing between meals. So it kind of bridged that gap between lunch and dinner, which was usually served around 8 p.m. So that two to five, that was when you'd be invited over for tea. And it was kind of one of those experiences where you could show up as you wanted, spend as much time or as little time as you'd like, and the best thing about the tea party at KDO's Food Carnival, the food is going to be not only beautiful, but super delicious. And I'm gonna show you to, how to dry, dive into that inner sophisticate and learn how to make a tea party for your friends. This is so fun, let's begin. Okay, I'm gonna start just with the tea. When you lay out your tea, you don't have to have all matching glasses. Get an array. It's beautiful. It's fun. Choose one that speaks to you. I love this teacup. Mm. If your grandma had some silver or you inherited something, break it out. A beautiful tea set. If not, just make do with your little hot pot, a little individual urn, depending on how many people you're having over. Don't stress it, but use your beautiful stuff if you have it. Lemons, cream, sugar cubes, all beautiful. Okay, now the tea. You want an array of tea. You want some herbal teas that are decaffeinated. You want some English teas and Earl Grey teas like English breakfast and Earl Grey and the ones that do have caffeine in are a black tea. I suggest some green teas and then this is the coolest tea your eyes will ever witness. I swear to God. I was invited to design a dinner party for the wealthiest man in China when he came to visit the United States. Not only did I design the party, I was a guest. There were 20 of us. Trust me, it was an incredible experience. In that experience, he had gifted us each with this. This is black tea of the highest quality from China, given only to Chinese royalty. It is literally available only for Chinese royalty. The box alone is gorgeous. However, for a true tea drinker, this is where it's at. I'm going to open it up. It's going to open towards you, but look at what I pull out. This is your individual containers. It's a gold silk liner. This tea is an experience in and of itself. If you could sit here and drink it with me, I would allow you to, but there's fruitiness. It's obviously a black tea. There are fruity elements. There are rich, deep notes. It just keeps going. It's like a fine wine. This is the example of how extravagant tea can get. So that's our tea section. Now, I always, I love tea in general. So what I like to do is take tea, steep it, and turn it into an iced tea. Mixing it with honey and maybe a little fruit juice if you'd like. Topping it with some fresh citrus. This is perfect if your tea party happens to land on a warmer day. And you want to offer your hot tea, but cheers. Mm. The traditional food for this initial greeting of your guests is going to be your scones. Scones are served, look at the jelly array I have. I have six 
flavors of preserves. Blueberry, cherry, raspberry, rhubarb, apricot, all flavors because I think that in the English tradition, they love their preserves because their fruit is so plentiful. And then when they preserve it, it's usually done handmade. Awesome. Clotted cream is really traditional in England, also whipped cream. And then for us Americans, our cinnamon cream cheese. I think it's fabulous. Whip it up, flavor it yourself. I have three types of scones. Now mine are homemade, but you can go buy some. Make sure they're not dry. You gotta have some life in your scones. So choose something maybe you can bake off yourself. That's ideal, so it makes your house smell good. They're moist, they're beautiful. This is a blueberry, I've got cinnamon iced, and then I've got apricot and almond. They are so good. This blueberry, you can see the sugar and the like flavorful berries inside. Mm. Welcome to the tea party. Next, I'm gonna show you sandwiches because the finger sandwiches are gonna be delicious and extravagant. I know you would expect nothing less from the KDO Food Carnival than this crazy array of amazing food. Now, oftentimes when you, we think about, about a tea, we think about these dry sandwiches that like have butter and weird stuff on them and no flavor and dry scones and you have to drink your tea to get it down your throat. But not at the food carnival, because food is the star of our show. Let's start there. I love tea sandwiches, but I also like to put them in different vehicles. I like an array of ingredients, an array of flavors. I want it to be bursting in your mouth. I want you to eat more and more and more. Traditionally, the cake stand is used with a variety on each tier so that the guests can come in and you can replenish as you go. But let's say you have a lot of guests and you like a little bit more order. I've also shown it in platters. Okay, so before I even get to my individual food items, let me stop and tell you my artist friend, Mark Nirens, created just for my tea party, this amazing plate. Hand painted, wait, wait for it. Do you think it's a picture of me? I love it. And I mentioned last episode, but we're working together to get a line of creative plates and bring them to you and make them available. So, so excited and I'm loving what he's producing because it's coming from that, from that creative energy within. So really cool. So very happy, thanks Mark. Black Couch Studio, love ya. Okay, now on to food bites. I'm gonna take them slowly and one at a time. Now the traditional concept is usually like a finger type sandwich. This is a ham salad and I like to mix it I don't know, onions, a little celery, a little sweet pickle relish if you want to. People have a tendency to go either way. And a mayonnaise base. But take a ham steak and grind it up. It's beautiful. Pumpernickel fingers. And then garnish. Always beautiful with the assembly. That's a little orange pepper, which is sweet. Celery leaf, because there's celery within. And a little pickle. Ooh. Mmm. So sophisticated. It is delicious. I love it. And I love the pumpernickel because it adds variety. Then I wanted to change it up a little bit because this is when we get into our creative edge. Not everything has to be a sandwich. This is right here a wonton cup with Asian chicken salad with a cilantro and a water chestnut garnish with a little red pepper wonton cups, just put them over the back of a muffin tin, a mini muffin tin, and bake them in the oven for a couple minutes. Perfect. A little olive oil glaze. Shred some chicken, mix it with your Asian dressing, a little slaw in there, and assemble. Beautiful. There's crunch, there's bite, there's zest. Mmm. There's excitement in my mouth going from the ham salad to the Asian chicken salad. And that's really what it's all about. 
we want to be excited. Ooh, an N5 petal. So different from anything I've tried. In this is a curry chicken salad. Ground up a little bit more, a little bit different flavor profiles, little raisins, a little yellow curry. Yum. I garnish with a little green onion and a little orange pepper, but you don't need to. You decide. Just, I love color. And I've come in, in blue, or I'm sorry, purple and green, as you can see, so vary it up. Mmm. Anybody who's gluten free, low carb, anything like that, or just doesn't want to like load up on that heavy bread, that's amazing. So amazing. All right, you're gonna think you saw this one, but I'm telling you, it's totally different. This is a blackened grouper taco, and I have it sitting on my lime wedge, which is super cute. And it's avocado, blackened grouper, and a little pico de gallo in a corn tortilla cup. Your guests can squeeze a little lime if they want, use that base. Mmm. Oh, All of a sudden, I'm not at my English tea party anymore. I'm on the beach in Mexico. Yum. So good. Needless to say, this is not a boring tea party at all. I'm loving this. We're moving on. Next one. I have a crab salad with celery root slaw and green apples on a brioche. How beautiful. And this is your elegant sophistication. This is where you make your crab salad first. Celery root, literally just shave that celery root, which is a beautiful ingredient that many people don't use. Mix it with a little mayo. And then just right before your guests come over, julienne up your green apples, your Granny Smith, put a little lemon on them for zest and so they don't brown. Mm. You're noticing all of these are staying together. I am definitely keeping my dress clean. There's a reason I stayed in the dress. Okay, you don't have to stop there. You can actually do like little mini sandwiches. Okay, pick on us. Love you guys. This is a mini club on a pretzel roll. For those people who just want like a little something basic. Okay, I did a basil mayo on here. That's incredible. And when I built the sandwich, I always like to show the build. I like tomato next to the bread. I like my turkey, my bacon stuck in the middle. And then the frisé has a little olive oil, sea salt, and lemon. Dress it, because the frisé can be a little bit texturally tough. And then tuck it in. Then squeeze bottle your basil mayo. This pretzel roll. Mmm. That's a turkey club. I mean, I will say though, that like basil mayo, it's an ingredient that you just mix your basil, fresh basil, with mayonnaise. I could eat it on just about anything. So, it's fabulous. Should we move trays? I'm ready. Whole new array, loving it. And as you can see, they're, on the tiered cake stand. So if you just do that, you don't need this. If you want to do both, that's cool. All right, little mini sandwiches, shrimp salad. Baby shrimp, so yummy, just with celery and dill, garnished with fresh dill and a little lobster roll. This is a treat. Mmm. I love the open face egg salad on a crostini. It's a crostade, and I've topped it with watercress, a little of the egg white, and caviar, because every tea party needs to have caviar, and this is crisp and firm and beautiful and tea party. Mm. Whenever you're talking egg salad, I always say make your favorite recipe. People like it different ways. Make it the way you like it. And then highlight that. 
And that holds true with all of these, but that one in particular, because people have their own special re homemade recipe for egg salad. Don't forget your tea. Mm. It's like springtime in my mouth. I hope you're enjoying how social is this. We are moving on to our smoked trout with pickled onions and a radish. Take your smoked trout, put it in your Cuisinart with a little mayo, salt, pepper, and lemon. Beautiful. Chunk a little piece, pickle your onions. I love this. Look at how full my plate is. Mmm. Mmm. Smoky fish is delicious. White toast triangles. Seems so simple, but if you toast them off in the oven, they'll hold up. It's a delicious bite. This is so fun. And last but not at all least is blue cheese, candied walnuts, and honey in an endive petal once again. Oh, yum. When you whip that blue cheese and that honey together, that is a beautiful bite. It's crisp. Great ending. We're moving on to some sweets because no tea party is complete without some sugar. We know that. No, no meal is complete without sugar. Let's face it. Be right back. Oh, the best time of a tea party is the sugar. Everybody loves sugar with their tea. Okay. I have some really cool stuff to show you because this is when the fun really begins and you can get a little bit more creative for your friends. Now, one of the things that I have been kind of turned on to is in it, like a hand embroidered cookie. And what you can do is it doesn't have to be a KDO food carnival cookie, that's for me. But you can do guest names to greet them. So you can do all kinds of things. You can do edible like bunting in cookie shapes really cool stuff. If you are a baker, this is the time to really showcase all of your talents, truly. Get out there, think outside the box, make everything edible, because this is fun. But these have, uh, are so beautiful, and then what I can do is my guests, if you were here with me, which you are, could take one home, I could wrap them in a little see-through bag, do a little tie, so many cute things to do. This is the time to get creative. Send your guests with it to go. I love it, and plus they're delicious. So, that's phenomenal. And let's just say you, do, you yourself don't have an artist friend, decorate a plate. Look at that, that's so fun, creative. You can say, welcome to my house, welcome to my tea party. If you're celebrating something fun, it's an awesome way to use your decorative frosting and create for your guests. Make it fun, honestly. This is playful. All right, now, so cool and so fun. There is something kind of like bite-sized and frosted about tea desserts. Oftentimes, they're pettifors and things that have no flavor and just sugar. What I've done is thought outside of that realm, and I love the mini cupcakes, so I've done a, a coconut, a lemon, and then a strawberry cupcake. All delicious, flavorful, but they look kind of uniform, so they're cute. They stay in that sort of tradition. Cake stands, this is the time, like I said, a tiered cake stand. Use your height, bring it up, decorate with flowers, spring flowers, any kind of flowers that are around. I love chocolate dipped fruit. So, I love to chocolate dip strawberries, especially when they're big and they're ripe. I usually do a dark chocolate dip and a white chocolate drizzle and put them in the little cupcake tins because when they dry, they will then kind of just flow off the sides and not get goopy on this plate and they'll be easy to pick up. Then you can set them out and your guests have something to kind of eat them with because this way they can pick them up with the stem Mmm. Crumbles a little bit, but it's worth it. Mmm. That is so good. It bursts in your mouth, and then you have that dark chocolate. Mmm. I know. 
I'm probably wearing that one right now though, but it's worth it, like I said. So delicious. Now what I've done is done a dark chocolate mousse and a white chocolate mousse. And I've done these in these little beautiful twill cups. I love them both so much because I think that white and dark chocolate mousse are like a married couple. It's like salt and pepper, like you never want to divorce them, you want to have them. Both available. So fun. I decorated the white chocolate with a little dark chocolate and the dark chocolate with a little white chocolate. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Who doesn't love mousse? It's like it never goes out of style. It's delicious. And I, like I said, I love both varieties. Let's just say you're not a huge baker. You don't have to make your own twill cups. You can buy a nice phyllo cup or a chocolate tulip. You can buy those too. So look around, they do have things that are pre-made for you. And then you can just pipe in your mousse. So easy, put in a pastry bag, pipe it in. Fabulous, decorate, set out. Now, just before we leave, I am going to tell you thank you for coming in the most gracious way I have enjoyed it. And I'm also gonna take a bite of a strawberry cupcake for the road. Thank you for joining my beautiful tea party. I sure hope we can see each other again soon. Have a lovely afternoon.